If style with this was a real human being, it would definitely be Pusha T. When you just start listening to his new record, it's almost dry. At first, it seems like Pusha's playing it way too safe. He sticks to his usual formula. He delivers his classic coke rap bars. And apart from a couple of new artists, he brings only frequent collaborators with whom he has been working for a decade. But once you stop comparing it to Daytona and accept the project in its entity, you get get the point. It's almost dry is an exhibition of Pusha T's development, his discography turning points and career peaks. Hello rap children, now rap postal is breaking down, it's almost dry. Half Pharrell, half Kanye production embodies different eras and different approaches which have been proven through the years. Since 1994, Pharrell Williams was the main producer for Clips, duo consisting of Pusha T and his brother Malice. With Pharrell, Pusha earned his first Billboard number one single, got signed to a label and co-wrote a McDonald's jingle. Percussion heavy and full of memorable guitar riffs, Pharrell's production became a household name. Make your skin crawl, press one button, let the wind fall. It's easy to distinguish his work on a new project. Hard hitting drums have familiar groovy patterns, and spacey scenes make the melodies sound futuristic. Pharrell's beats are simultaneously tensed. We was out in Brambleton after Pooh got hit. Club entourage in that new drop six. And laid back. which gave Pusha space for experiments with his voice cadences and let him use his charisma in full. Pharrell is like more of a, like a, a composer. He wants to make sure that everything is sticky and just stays with you the whole time throughout the whole song. On the other hand, there is Kanye West, who has been helping Pusha to establish his solo career since 2010. Kanye let him shine on iconic Runaway and solely produced his project Daytona. On the contrary of Pharrell's composing style, Kanye's approach is more similar to collage technique. Through chopping samples, Ye blends the genres and transforms classic soul records into earworm tunes. Or makes them act as choruses on their own. Compared to Daytona, Kanye's production on a new project is more subtle, but it's definitely a highlight here. With track Just So You Remember, Kanye delivers an epic villain theme song. And also reminds us of Pusha's eternal love for weird percussion joints. Your SL's missing an S nigga. Your plane's missing a chef. He's also featured on a couple of tracks, but the real shining moment for Kanye on the whole record is Diet Coke. The number on his jersey is the Coke price. You order Diet Coke, that's a joke, right? Built upon catchy piano loop and Fat Joe samples, this instrumental was actually made 20 years ago. That's why it feels like a classic coke rap cut of Freak Ones only built for Cuban links, beloved by Pusha. Somehow, even after a decade, Pusha still manages to make his coke rap sound entertaining, full of double entendres and funny comparisons. Black Rory, white hood, make it a race thing. Pusha's previous collab with Kanye and Cardi Feel the Love was the strongest release of energy. Love the fuck the trap music. Dope money just came along. And unlike high anticipation, I didn't like rock and roll much. Kanye's verse seemed poorly mixed and low effort. Cardi's chorus and Beyonce's sample wasn't just for my taste. There are also Don Talava and Lil Uzi Vert who never collabed with Pusha before. They definitely refreshed the sound, but sadly their parts took the majority of timing and Pusha became a feature on his own track. As a strong lyricist, Pusha T finds worthy ally in a figure of Jay-Z. Hove to me is like you know, he's the best rapper. He can always add an uptick 
to the record. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can't say what he says. Previously, he wrote brilliant guest verse on Drug Dealers Anonymous. And now he dived into introspection on neck and wrist, giving clever response to all of criticisms of his lifestyle. I be like, Jay -Z's a cheater. I wouldn't listen to reason either. Sonically and contextually surprising moment on the whole record is I Pray For You, featuring Labyrinth and Pusha's brother. Supported by gospel production, Malice speaks on his conversion to Christianity and living a rap game without being defeated. Vietnam flashbacks, I get triggered by a sniff. Today's top fives only strengthening my myth. Pusha's reminiscence about Clip's era and rapping about his newborn son makes I Pray For You his most personal record to date. It's the grown man in me, searching for the plug, that's the nomad in me. You may like it more or less than Daytona or any Eclipse project, but it's almost dry, contains all at once, and perfectly shows consistency and longevity of Pusha T.